We're gonna start um, sitting on the knees this evening. Okay, so, and you've got two cameras, so you can see, you can decide which one you want to use. You just double click, or in if you're using your computer, in the if you hover over, there's these three dots in the corner, and you can make that the full screen. So, as you like. This one you see close, but some, when I stand, then it doesn't work, and the other one's better, so. Okay, so let's start on our knees. Place the hands on the thighs. Close the eyes. And just bring your awareness inwards. Seeing how you are today at this moment. Noticing your breathing. Not necessarily changing the breath, just noticing for the moment just what is. Tuning in. And then trying to elongate the spine. Relaxing the jaw. Relaxing all the facial muscles. And start to bring your awareness back to the breath. And this time, trying to make the breath the same length for both the inhale and the exhale. Using Ujjayi. You can engage Mula Bandha to Uddiyana Bandha so you feel more breath coming into the rib cage. So you feel the rib cage expanding forward and back, side to side, and up and down. Using the breath to bring us to presence. Clear the mind. And wake up the body. Bring the hands in front of the chest. You might want to give yourself an intention for this class. For instance, if you have any tension anywhere in the body, sometimes we hold tension in solar plexus, the neck, the jaw, the forehead, anywhere where you might feel a little bit of tension, you could use that as your intention to keep bringing yourself back to those areas and see if you can melt the muscles in those areas. So for instance, if your neck feels a little tense, Maybe as you practice, you're going to keep bringing your mind to how the neck is feeling and see if you can relax the neck muscles down away from the ears while at the same time elongating the neck by letting the crown of the head come away from the ears.
We'll chant OM. Inhaling. especially if you've never done this before. You start with your hands on the mid thighs and you're going to exhale fully. As you exhale, you let the tongue come out and you're gonna gaze up to the third eye. So it's like a lion um, breath. Okay, so I inhale. As I go forward, I put my hands close to my knees and I press into my knees, straight the arms, and this helps lift the chest and it'll pull the diaphragm up. Okay, so we're gonna try five of those. So you can go at your own rhythm. You start in the mid, with the hands mid thighs, inhale normally. Really gaze to the third eye. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. If you finish, then you just come back to the original sitting position. Coming and sitting back on the heels like this. And then you're going to pick up the arms, interlace the thumbs, so your thumbs like kind of like butterfly hands, and then reach the baby fingers up really high. You can kind of move about side to side, start to feel this lengthening on either side of the body, like you're bringing your rib cage higher and higher. And then find a place you're going to stay, pull in Mula Bandha, pull in Uddiyana Bandha, and reach the thoracic cage and the whole baby finger side of the arms way, way up, making length. Then allow the right fingertips to come down beside you, slide them over a little bit, and you're going to exhale, soften the right elbow, and just fold a little bit over that side. Inhale, come up, let the left fingertips come down, and soften the left elbow and reach over the left side. Coming back up, switching sides. And we're going to work a little bit with the breath, so you inhale, come up, Exhale, come to one side. Inhale, up. Exhale, awakening the side body. Often we're not stretching that, those sides, so it can feel really nice on the lower back. I'm just doing a couple more. And then coming with the fingertips on either side of you. You're going to start to turn your torso towards the right. Bring the left hand on the outside of your knee, right fingertips behind. Pull up Mula Bandha Uddiyana Bandha, lengthen through the spine. Press the hand into the knee and use that as leverage to get a little deeper twist. Twisting over the right side. 
drop the shoulder blades so you feel the skin of the neck sliding away from the ears. And releasing, changing sides. Inhale, first get a nice long back. Exhale, pressing the hand into the knee, using that as leverage to get a little deeper twist. And coming back, bringing the fingertips in front of you, and you're gonna walk the fingertips forward, stay high up on the fingertips, reach the sitting bones away, bring the ears between the upper arms, and see if you can crawl the fingers a little bit further away. Again, you feel this nice lengthening through the entire back body. And place the palms firm into the floor. Pull a little bit with your palms to lift the torso up and we're gonna to come to the hands and the knees. Spread the fingertips, separate the knees about shoulder or hip width apart. And then we're first gonna see if we can find neutral. So it's harder than it sounds. So you have to use your fingertips into the floor and then push into the hands and feel like your um, sternum is reaching away from the floor, like you're reaching the sternum towards the space between the shoulder blades. And then from there, reach the crown of the head away, so in front of you, and then reach the sitting bones in the opposite direction. So you have this sensation like you're making space between the tailbone and the crown. And your hands are pressing into the floor to lift away from the floor. The navel is pulling in. And then slowly you're going to slide your right knee back, tuck the toes under, and straighten that knee away. Pull the navel firmly in. Soften the skin of the neck away from the ears. And release the right knee, pick up the left knee, pressing the heel away, reaching the crown in the opposite direction. Feel those lower abdominals pulling in, soften the skin of the neck, soften the jaw. And release the knee back down, stretch up the right leg. This time you're gonna pick up the right leg, trying to bring it Parallel with the floor, check that the navel really keeps pulling in. And then if you feel okay, you're going to stretch the left arm out. So you're trying to make a nice straight line from the back heel right through those front fingertips. Then place the left hand down, point your toes, and you're going to slide the toes towards the left side. And then turn your head and look towards those right toes, the straight leg toes. Pick up the leg and bring it back, knee down. Stretch up the left leg, reaching in two directions. Start to lift up the leg, bringing it parallel to the floor. Notice that the belly wants to sag down and you're gonna pull it up. With the weight of the leg, it wants to kind of collapse. Now you're gonna to try to pull it away. Stretch the right arm out, making this nice straight line. Find a steady gazing point. Soften the gaze, soften the face, and breathe. Allow the right hand to come down, point the back toes, and then slide those toes over the right. Turn your head and look to the toes, the toes of the straight leg. Check your weight is still even between the two hands. And 
then slide the leg back, placing the knee back where it was. Now separate the knees, knees wide, point the toes, and bring yourself into this wide knee child's pose. Look at your hands, press the fingers tips evenly into the floor, so you look and you see the inner wrist and the outer wrist are the same distance from the floor. And then from there, see if you can bring the tailbone and the pubic bones towards one another so you can engage Mula Bandha. So you're bringing the two sitting bones, the tailbone, the pubic bone towards one another. And at the very same time, you're reaching the sitting bones towards the heels. Then bring the forehead down to the floor and you can relax the arms here. Relax the bandhas, relax the legs. Just completely let go for a moment. And start to slide just halfway up. And then you're going to take your left arm and you're going to slide it under your right arm. Bring the left shoulder, left ear to the floor. Pick up the right arm and reach it up to the ceiling. Press the hands on the floor into the floor and try to swivel the neck and look up towards the upper hand. It doesn't matter if you actually see the upper hand, but you're just using that as a direction to get a little spinal twist. Maybe open the upper back a little bit and breathe. And lower the hand, stretch it back out, releasing the other hand and switching sides. Slide the right arm under, let the right ear and shoulder come to the floor, stretch up that left arm, press the hand into the floor, reaching the other hand up and see if you can spin the spine, bring your gaze upwards but it should not hurt, and it should feel good. Lower the hand, slide the two hands forward, and then kind of pull with the hands, tuck the toes under, separating the feet, and then walk the hands back, and coming into a nice squatting position. So if this feels comfortable for you, so it shouldn't hurt the lower back. If it does, then you stay sitting up straight, trying to elongate the spine. If you have a healthy spine and there's nothing going on today, then you can turn your palms upwards and let the head drop. And then you can even take your, so your elbows are on the floor, interlace the fingers around the back of the head and lengthen the back of the neck. So you're trying to bring the chin towards this little notch between the collarbones. So it's really rounding and stretching the back. Relax the hips all around the hip joints, relaxing the lower back. And if you're doing that, release the hands, walk the hands forward, and come into a downward facing dog. So for the moment, you can keep the knees bent, press into the hands, reach the sitting bones away from the hands, and then see if you can pull in the pelvic floor. And then suck in the lower abdominals, so you're making this little hollow between the two hip bones. Just in a light way, it's not, it shouldn't feel forceful. And then start to straighten one knee, bend the knee, straighten the other knee, and you can work back and forth really mindfully, like you're moving in slow motion 
and you're able to feel all the sensations in the legs, both from the inside and on the outside. Like you've got all pointed awareness in the legs. If at some point that feels good for you, maybe you're going to straighten both knees. Feel the ears, the ears between the upper arms, the back of the neck long, the jaw released, the forehead released, and concentrating on the breath. And then look forward. You're going to step one foot right behind the wrist, the other behind the other wrist. And then bring the feet parallel, come high up onto the fingertips. Have a look at your feet so they look like they're straight. Have a look at the knees. The kneecaps are lifting up so the thighs are engaged. And then press the fingertips into the floor and feel the sternum, the chest, reaching well away from the floor. Lower belly away from the floor. And then reach the crown of the head away from the tailbone. So you're firming in the muscles, like you're finding co-contraction of the muscles. Bring the arms out to the sides, flex the fingertips back, and reach the base of the hands out in two directions. You're really trying to reach away. The next inhalation, turn the palms forward, and slowly using the strength of the, of the legs coming all the way up, reach the arms up, exhale, arms to the sides. You can wiggle the feet together, heel toe, heel toe. Open the palms, inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale, folding over the legs, halfway down, soften the knees and relax the neck. Inhale, slide the hands up the shins, halfway up, belly in. Exhale, put the hands on the floor, lean forward so you feel your fingertips activating. And then step one foot back, other foot back. Coming just to pause in this plank pose. Knees, pelvis, chest to the floor. Turn the toes, point the toes. Open the chest so you feel like you're bringing your upper arms parallel with the floor. Press into the fingertips and then turn the toes and coming into puppy pose. Have a look at your wrist. Make sure the inner wrist and the outer wrist are the same level so that you have even pressure in the hands. We don't want to press, press too much in the inner hand. And we don't want to press too much in the outer hand. It should be even. Once you've found that, bring the ears between the upper arms. Feel the neck is long. There's no pain. Reaching the tailbone away. And then coming up, lift the buttocks, lift the knees. Step one foot forward, other foot forward. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, soften over the legs. Inhale, strong legs as you rise up. Exhaling, samastihi. And really feeling the breath. Second one. Inhale, big inhale. Exhale, full release. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, hands down, step the opposite foot back first, second foot, pause in a plank, feel the upper, outer arms sliding away from the ears, and lean forward, knees, pelvis, chest down. Turn the toes, open the shoulders, just a little baby cobra, keep the chin slightly tucked in, use your fingertips, turn the toes, press into the hands, and either into puppy pose or downward facing. Really just learning to do deep listening of your own body. 
So you can decide for yourself today which is the best pose for you. It's not always the same, but it's always hard to tell which is the best. That's normal. That's about three breaths. Four. And five. Stepping forward, one foot, two foot feet. Inhale, open chest. Exhale, releasing forward. Inhale, lead with the chest all the way up to standing. Exhale, samasthiti. And again, inhaling. Exhaling, focusing on the breath. Inhaling, exhaling, stepping back. Try to use as little energy as you can. Knees, pelvis, chest. Inhale, little baby cobra. Exhale, either puppy or downward dog. And then try to bring your mind inwards. Notice your breathing. One, two, three, four, and five. Lift the buttocks, lift the knees, and stepping forward. Inhale to halfway, exhale to soften the knees, soften the neck, soften the shoulders. Inhale all the way up, exhaling. And just lightly bend the knees so you're doing a kind of an easy Utkatasana. Inhale to raise the arms and keeping the knees bent, fold over the legs, relax the neck. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, put the hands down. Step the feet back. Pause in your plank. And knees, pelvis, chest to the floor. Inhale, your baby cobra. Exhale, coming back. And then you're going to bring your, you can pick up your knees to start. Bring your right foot towards your thumb. Lower your back knee back onto the floor. And so we're going to come up here like this for a second sun salutation. Bring your right hand on the top of your thigh. Push your thigh down. But as you're pushing it down, the thigh is slightly resisting up. Okay, so that you find your pelvis is level. You want to have both sitting bones or both hip bones about the same level. Open the palms. Inhale, raise the arms up. Reach so you can interlace your thumbs and reach the baby fingers up. Feel like you're getting a little bit taller here. And then open to the side like you're going to start to turn towards your right knee. Bring your arms open. Let your left hand come down. Bend your back knee and see if you can hold your foot behind you. And if you get your foot, doesn't matter if you don't, you can just also stay here. We can leave the foot down as well. So if you get your foot or that feels good, then press the left hand into the floor and try to open the chest to the side. Almost like you're going to turn the chest up towards the sky. And then release the foot. Tuck the toes under when you arrive. And then use your fingertips, walk yourself back. At some point, the foot comes off the floor, except for the heel. And you're gonna see if you can sit on that back heel. Inhale, open the chest, try to get a little longer. Flex that front foot. And then slowly, slowly, if that feels good, you're gonna slide forward. And if you want, you can bring your hands forward and hold your foot. 
but rest your elbows on the floor. Feel the sternum trying to slide towards that front foot. The skin of the neck trying to slide away from the ears. So you keep the back long. And then put the hands back into the floor. Press with the hands and you're going to come back into the first position. Open the arms, raise the arms up, lengthen a little bit, exhale, put the hands down, lift the back knee, set the right knee back, left foot forward, right knee on the floor. Inhale, place the hand on the upper thigh, press that thigh down, co-contract, pushing up, trying to bring the pelvis level. Wrapping the two hip bones to broaden through the SI joints. Open the palms, raise them up. And then start to open to the sides, the arms, turning towards the left. Let the right hand come down, lean into that right hand, pick up the back foot. And then from there, open the chest, lengthen through the spine. Breathing fully. And release the foot. Then from here, you're remembering, tuck the back toes. Start to walk yourself back, moving mindfully. Foot is off the floor and flexed and slowly bowing towards that front leg. If it hurts the toes for any reason, you can keep the toes pointed. You don't have to do it like this. And if it feels okay, you can reach your arms forward. Have the elbows on the floor, helping you to support yourself. And then come back inside, noticing your breathing. Seeing if you can make the inhales and the exhales the same length and same sound. And releasing the hands, coming back into that original kind of Virabhadrasana, modified Virabhadrasana, raising the arms up. Hook the thumbs the opposite way and see if you can get a little bit taller. And release the hands down, come forward into the fingertips, step back, coming into your plank, knees, pelvis, chest to the floor. Inhale, little baby cobra, chin in. Exhale, puppy or downward facing dog, depending on how, how you're feeling today. If you wanna make it a softer class, Stay in puppy. One, two, three, four, and five. Lifting the buttocks, lifting the knees, and stepping forward. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, soften the knees forward, keeping the knees slightly bent. Inhale, raise the arms, Utkatasana. And exhale, Samastihi. Good job. Bend the knees, step the right foot back, turn so the outside edges of the feet are parallel. Open the arms out to the sides, flex the hands back, and reach the hands away. Feel the upper inner thigh sliding up into Mula Bandha. So you have your pelvis as your base. Okay, this is, this is your foundation here. So you want to keep this feeling strong. Even if we're doing kind of a light class for the standing positions, I still think this is a wise idea. And then you're going to come halfway down, bringing the, par the spine parallel with the floor. Let the left hand come down just below the face and then stretch the right hand up. 
and see if you can swivel the neck, swivel the upper back, gazing up to that right thumb. One. Pull the lower abdominals in, trying to keep the pelvis level. About three, four, five. And coming in with both arms stretched out. And let the right hand come right under the face, push into that hand, using it as some leverage to get a nice feeling in the spine. Keep the chest, the sternum, trying to reach forward. And then the sitting bones in the opposite direction. So you feel like you're making space in the spine, space between all the vertebrae. Come back with both arms stretched. Use the legs, use the belly. Inhale, come all the way back up, lifting the arms, interlacing the thumbs and reaching up high. You can turn and gaze up towards those thumbs and open the hands, interlace the fingers behind the back, relaxing the shoulders. Exhale, folding over. You're welcome to bend the knees, drop the head and let the arms fall over the head. Just find a point to gaze at. If you want, you can swing a little bit one side, swing the other side, bending, straightening the legs. And then coming back to center. And inhale all the way up. Place the hands on the hips and pull the heels in towards one another. Take your hands on the upper inner thighs and use your hands to slide the upper inner thighs out so that the knees and the, first, and the second toe are in line with one another. And then let the pelvis drop a little bit. And then using your hands, you're kind of pushing into your hands to lift the chest and open the chest up. that feels okay, if you can keep the knees where they are, you're going to reach your arms up towards the sky. Breathing. Feel the upper inner thighs sliding towards one another, finding your mula bandha. And then straighten the knees, turning the toes to the front of your mats, and letting the hands come down, lean into the hands, Stepping the feet back, finding your little plank, knees, pelvis, chest to the floor. Inhale, a little cobra. Exhale, back into either puppy or downward dog. Stay there for a moment, tuning back in with your breathing. Notice your breathing. Push into the hands, lift your knees, and start to sit back, and you're gonna come and sit on the two sitting bones. Straighten the legs out in front of you, and then you're gonna pull your legs towards you so your knees are bent, and then here, we're gonna open our arms, reach up high, and then lean forward and see if we can put our low ribs onto the thighs, like that. Bring the hands so the hands are be behind the Achilles tendons. Keep the chest lifted. Keep the skin of the neck going away from the ears. So from here, we can stay there or we can slowly, slowly work to push the heels away keeping the forearms under the legs, and then maybe we relax here a little bit. And then releasing that as you release, you can take your hands behind the knees, 
pulling your knees back, separate the feet, bringing them about hip width apart, slide your fingertips behind you, and then keeping the collarbones broad, but this part of the shoulder stays connected. So you're not squeezing too much your upper back, okay? The back is, the upper back is staying neutral. Press into the hands, lift the hips up, and see if you can bring the hips as high as the knees. Keep the chin tucked in, use your fingertips, keep the pelvis level, and then see if you can bring your knee up over the hips, and then maybe straighten the leg up. Release the knee down, check the hips are still lifted as high as the knees. Bring the left knee in, so the knee's over the hip, and then maybe straighten the leg up. And lower down, lower the pelvis, cross the legs, bring your hands in front of you, and you can just release forward. You can make fists with your hands, relax like this. And then push into the hands, coming back up. I forgot to ask if everybody has bolsters or cushions. Do, do you guys have this kind of stuff? Let's see. Um, okay. If you have something, even if you have a blanket, you can take a blanket like this, for instance, and roll it like a tube. Something like this. Does everybody have something or a thick towel? Yes, no, nothing. Or roll your mat. Another idea, if you're okay to be on the, a little bit on the floor, you roll your mat out, up and you make this little little round part and then we're going to try to come with our shoulder blades on the part that's lifted. Bring your hands behind the head, interlace the fingers and lengthen the back of the neck and then reach your elbows away like you're reaching your elbows to the back of your the other side of the the mat that's no longer there and then put the back of the head down stretch your arms up and you can start to elongate the legs so stretch the legs out reach the baby fingers up and away and then start to reach them over the head but don't let them touch the floor okay so you can come down and oh they're touching the floor and then pick them up away and then keep reaching the baby fingers away from you, pull in the navel, and then flex the feet and reach the heels away. Let's see if you can hold it there. Just starting to open the chest. And then bring your arms back, bend your knees. You can hold behind your legs, tuck in your chin, and rock up to a sitting position. Unless that hurts your back, you always roll to the side and come up. Okay, so we're going to lean back, open the chest. Bring the shins parallel with the floor and keep holding your arms. You're kind of pulling your arms this way and then pulling your hands down. And as you do so, that helps you anchor your shoulder blades and lift the chest. 
And now round your back and you're gonna roll down. Bring the feet about hip width apart. Stretch the arms up towards the ceiling. And then reach the baby fingers, like you can do one at a time, one up, the other up, reaching the baby fingers. So the whole hand goes up, but it's like you're guiding yourself from this whole edge here, which is attached to the low um, tip of the shoulder blade. Reaching up, reaching up, and then keep the back of the neck long. And you're going to start to lift your hips from the floor, stretch the arms over the head, reaching those baby fingers away, and then bend the elbows and place the palms on the floor, kind of around the forehead area. And you're not going to lift up into a back bend, but you're going to try to bring your elbows over your wrists. So feel like your elbows are reaching away from the chest, and then pressing the elbows into the hands so that you get this kind of perpendicular line here. And then pull the chest towards the chin. And then release the buttocks, release the arms, pull your knees close to the chest, Bring the shins perpendicular to the floor, taking your ankles or taking your feet and bringing the knees towards the armpits like you're doing a happy baby pose. If it feels good, you can rock a little bit side to side. And then straightening the legs up. You're going to bring your hands behind the legs and then see if you can bring your legs towards you. So it's like an upside down Paschimottanasana. And slowly bending the knees, separating the feet. Separate the feet a little bit wider than the hips and a little bit away from the hips. Bring your arms into this cactus position so the elbows are about the same level as the shoulders and the hands about the same level as the elbows. And just allow the knees to fall to one side. Close the eyes. Staying here, trying to relax. It's really uncomfortable for some reason, come out. Lifting the knees, letting them fall to the other side. Try to keep the eyes closed. If there is an area that you might be holding some tension, you can bring your mind to that area and notice if there's still tension there. If there is, try to consciously ask the muscles to release. For instance, the back of the neck, the shoulders, just allowing those muscles to melt. The jaw, the facial muscles, same, just allowing them to melt. And lifting the knees, letting them fall to the first. 
our side. We're going to kind of do these slow motion, lifting, letting them fall to the second side, and going back and forth, massaging the buttocks. to neutral and straighten out the two legs. This time you're going to lift your arms up kind of like a diamond shape so the fingers can touch. Let your right knee open from the hip joint so that you've got external rotation and then start to slide your right knee out. So either you can relax here, just let those left toes relax to the side, or if it's okay, you might start to straighten your right leg out. Okay, so it shouldn't hurt the knee. You should allow, you, the leg should be able to feel heavy. So feeling the skeleton, feeling really heavy into the floor. And scan the body, see if there's any place that's holding on. And see if you can ask those places to release. So perhaps starting with the toes, the toes of both feet, noticing if they're clinging on or trying to point towards the ceiling. Just allow them to relax in any way that is comfortable for them. Checking the rest of the legs, seeing if those muscles can melt. Checking the pelvis, can the pelvis feel heavy? Checking what's happening in the torso. Is there any area that's clinging on? Let the shoulders feel heavy so that they're being supported by the floor. See if you can melt away the arms. Notice the back of the neck, those muscles able to melt away, throat, the jaw. What about all the facial muscles? Sliding that right leg back to meet the left. Flex the feet. Externally rotate the left leg. And start to lift that knee, sliding it up to the side. And now let the right leg completely relax so the toes can hang to the sides. And if it feels okay, maybe you're going to stretch out that left leg. So notice that one side can feel very different from the other. This is normal. We look like we're symmetrical from the outside. Two legs, two arms, two eyes. 
and inside there's a lot of asymmetry especially as we grow and live in this world we're either right-handed or left-handed slowly our body and our posture adapts to these differences and so when we're doing yoga we're seeing we're doing it for a few many reasons but some interesting things to do is to just notice the differences so we get to know our body we have an intimate relationship with our body rather than allowing it to be numb like it doesn't even somehow belong to us notice we notice the differences and this might be giving us some information of different areas to work on or explore when we do our practice it gives us some information and if we're really out of balance we might do some exercises or spend more time on one side than the other, for example. It might enlighten us into why we might have some pain in our bodies. Try to release. Let the skeleton feel heavy in the body. Let the muscles melt off that skeleton. Feel like the earth is supporting you. And then you can slide the leg back. Take the hands, interlace the fingers over the head, turn the fingers out, flex the feet, then reach in two directions. Feel like you're getting a little longer. And then keeping your right arm over the head, bend your left knee, and you're going to use that foot to turn and roll onto the belly. You can kind of just scoop so you're staying on the mat. And you can make a pillow with your hands so your forehead is on that pillow. You can shake out the pelvis a little, a little bit. And then you're going to bend your right knee up so it's kind of like the same exercise but on the belly your right knee so it's about level with the pelvis and if that feels comfortable and you want to go a little further maybe you're going to straighten that right leg out out to the side Bring yourself inwards. If it's more comfortable, you can turn the face to one side. And if it's more comfortable, you can remove the hands from under the face. Find what is best for yourself. And then try to relax the pelvis, relax the hips. Relax the shoulders, the neck. See if you can relax inside the mouth, the tongue, the insides of the cheeks. The lips and all around the mouth.
bending that knee and pulling it back. Bending the left knee, sliding it out. Relax the pelvis. And maybe you even straighten that leg out. So if you were looking to one side, you're going to pick up the face and turn and look to the other side. Bring yourself inwards. And see if you can bring your awareness to your breath. Notice this soft breathing. Bending that knee, sliding it back. You're going to bring your hands beside the waist. Push into the hands. Try to go as slow and stay as peaceful as possible. Bring the toes together, open the knees wide. You're going to come down into a wide knee child's pose. Bring the arms out in front, turn the head to one side. If you were turning the head on the previous position, try to turn it to the opposite direction than you just did. And see if you can let your body be supported by the gravity. So see if you can release and, and not um, kind of fight against gravity, like you're not trying to pull yourself away. Sometimes when we do these kinds of positions, it's like we're trying to protect ourselves and we hold on. And see if you can notice any areas you might be doing this in, and then see if you can relax it and let it go. If you're looking to one side, you're going to lift your head and turn to the opposite side.
pressing into the hands, slowly making your way up to a sitting position. And we're just going to come and sit on one side of the heels. If you have something to sit on, that would be handy. If not, roll your mat again and try to get something just, even if you're quite flexible, we're going to do a little pranayama so it's a little helpful to be just slightly lifted up. Just to release out of the child's pose, just stretch your legs out and shake them out. So you're going to be able to stay here for a little bit. And then come into a position that you find most comfortable. Lengthen the spine. Bring the arms in a way that the weight of the arms goes into your legs. Close the eyes. No Mula Bandha and Uddiyana Bandha. You're lightly engaging those. start to do the sound of ujjayi. So making that soft sound, the inhales and the exhales, so we can hear the breathing. And as we've got the, the belly held a little bit and the pelvic floor held a little bit, we should be able to feel more movement happening in the rib cage. So the rib cage is moving forward, back, side to side, up and down. And try to make the ujjayi a little bit dynamic. That we've done these kind of relaxing poses. Relax the body. But at the same time, we want to have a clear and awake and alert mind. Sometimes the breathing can help, help with this. Bring your hands on either side of the rib cage, just lightly. And with your inhales, you really want to feel the rib cage opening. With the exhales, it closes a little bit. Once you've found that movement, you can release the hands, but try to keep that movement. We're going to do some Nadi Shodhana breathing. With this, you need to bring your first finger and your middle finger inwards, like on the inside of your palm, and then bring your ring finger and your baby fingers together so that you're able to close the nostril with the right, with the thumb, the right nostril with the thumb, and left nostril with the ring finger. Okay, so it's like this. Okay, so come back to your breathing, I'll talk you through. If you know Nadi Shodhana and you wanna go ahead on your own breathing rhythm, you can go ahead. If you're not sure, then I'll talk you through. Check again, the rib cage is moving. And then you're gonna exhale fully, 
from the bottom, like you're squeezing the air out through the torso. Close your right nostril. Inhale through the left. Close the left nostril. Exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close the right, exhale through the left. So that would be one round of Nadi Shodhana. I'll talk you through a couple more. Inhale left. Close left, exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. That's two rounds. Inhale left. Exhale right. Try to double the exhalation. Inhale right. Exhale left. Double the exhalation. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Now try to continue on your own breathing rhythm. As we do pranayama, we want to be able to relax the neck muscles, relax the jaw. We want to be able to relax a lot of the accessory breathing muscles to facilitate deep breathing. Just finish this last round and then put the hand back on the knee. Keep the deep breathing. And see if you can keep the mind clear and awake while being relaxed. While you allow the breath to become more calm and natural. So no longer controlling the breath. If you don't have to let the rib cage move as much, let go of the two bandhas. Feel your body from the inside out. Just noticing the state of your body. Notice if it feels a little more relaxed, but at the same time, awake. You can feel it fully from when you first started the class. 
Notice if there's any tension that's being released. Notice the quality of natural breathing. Noticing if the mind, the fluctuations of the mind feel a little bit stiller, but all the while attentive, so the mind is still clear, it doesn't feel dull or distracted. If you're able to sit freely in your true self, Bring the hands in front of the chest. And let's try to send out all these good feelings, good benefits of yoga practice. Let's try to send them out to all beings everywhere. So we wish the best for everyone. We wish less suffering, more wakefulness, more peace, more calm. We'll chant Om Shanti to finish, inhaling. Practicing. I hope you feel good and I hope you'll keep practicing.